Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Guri, and I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homington Fertility Center. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a topic that troubles all of us, the empty follicle syndrome. Are there empty follicles? That's something which we'll have a review about. This is based on a review and a case which was published in 2012. Empty follicle syndrome, successful treatment in a recurrent case and review of literature published in Human Reproduction. Now the question is, what is empty follicle syndrome? It was described in 1986. It's where no oocytes are obtained. It seems to occur between 0.04% and 3.5% in the presence of dominant follicles. And its classification is a genuine, where you don't get two sites, where you see mature follicles and stimulation, good follicular response and development, and optimal HCG level on the day of a collection. False is where, where you fail to retrieve oocytes and when the HCG levels are low, which could mean that there is an error in administering the HCG. Now, this is a unique case, a 24-year-old patient, eight cycles of IVF, different protocols used, antagonist, agonist, all based on HCG trigger. The ninth egg collection, they used an analog trigger, a 0.1 decapeptal, 40 hours before, and HCG 34 hours before. 16 metaphase 2 sites were obtained, 9 blastocysts were preserved, 2 were transferred, and there was a singleton pregnancy. And that such show, tells us something more. It is when you see that you don't get any eggs, you see follicles being empty on an HCG trigger, have a think again. If you see very immature eggs, have a think again. There has to be a reason. And the reason should not be pushing a woman towards donor eggs, especially in young women. What is the mechanism? There are multiple mechanisms and we just don't know the right answer. Premature ovulation, low bioavailability of HCG. You could give the right dose of HCG, but its availability is less. Time for HCG administration to maturation of the oocyte complex, a unilateral empty follicle due to torsion of the ovary. In older women, where the MH is very low, we do see follicles that do not have any granulosa cells. There is defective granulosa cell function or there is defective oocyte development. Now, a majority of you know, empty follicle syndromes have been achieved in down-regulated cycles, mainly because those were the commonest ones used. And many options have been suggested. Option number one is re-administer the HCG from a different batch, or use a recombinant or use a urinary HCG if one side is empty, changing from a urinary HCG to a recombinant HCG. In summary, I would say that there are two treatments available. One is to use the analog trigger as an alternative trigger. And second, equally important, is prolonging the interval between oocyte collection and the trigger, which basically means rather than doing it between 35 and 36 hours, pushing it to 37 or 38 hours. Risky, but may be helpful in a few cases. Now, we have discussed this before, and what does GNRH analog do? It does something different to an HCG trigger. Though its amplitude is less of, the, of LH, it also gives a rise of FSH, which cannot be given by HCG. And we think that it does increase LH receptor formation and also may start the process of cumulus expansion. It activates plasma activator and also we think that FSH 
may allow for expansion of cumulus, cumulus cells to form a new site complex which requires hyaluronic acid. Now all that is supported by FSH. So probably we think that the rise of FSH may be useful in some cases. This rise may explain some benefits. Now the other thing we have to realize is which I don't think anyone of us knows the answer is when you give the antagonist you block LH rise. But that same pituitary releases LH on an unlocked trigger. How and why? I, I don't think any of us knows that. I think probably as even the authors believe that that pathway where the LH surge occurs when an LH blockage is already taking place with an antagonist is different and that's something which probably time will tell us. The second treatment is when you prolong the interval between ovulation trigger and oocyte collection. In a natural cycle, oocyte LH surge occurs 34 to 36 hours before ovulation. With HCG, ovulation occurs approximately 37 hours later. What we know is meiosis begins 18 hours after the LH surge and you need the LH concentration to be maintained above the threshold for between 14 to 27 hours for maximum oocyte maturation. And that's the reason why if you have a very short LH and if you see here, the analog trigger gives you a high LH for up to 24 hours. The follicle maturation and oocyte maturation is time dependent and varies from person to person. Again, some of you who come for the course, I'll, I'll always be saying it is a length of stimulation that probably matters rather than just the size of the follicle. So if you're going to trigger at, at follicle size 20 at on day 9, your chances of getting empty follicles or getting mature eggs is probably slightly increased. But also remember, women are different. And that's the reason why Frick's protocols don't work for all. And in some women, that expansion takes longer. If you don't know why, but it's something which we need to start looking at in the future. In summary, genuine empty follicle syndrome exists. Follicles may not really be empty. They may be retrieved if you can change the trigger or prolong the duration where between the trigger and the USAT collection. There's no doubt that it represents a syndrome of granular cell impairment, a cumulus expansion and disruption, oocyte cumulus disruption does not occur. Why we don't know as yet, but that's a thought to go ahead with. Do you start using more of the analog trigger? If you ask me, except in hypo hypox where you can't use it, and you can't use it in a long protocol, have a rethink. By next year, my institute will come up with one of the largest studies in analog trigger, and we'll present you the data I believe that we are able to detect if the analog has worked. If you have blood tests that can give us more confidence and also teach us a lot more about the physiology of this wonderful treatment where we make the treatments safer for women. Thank you very much.